Hi, my name is John Briggs. I'm trying to fix a fault code with my 2004 Toyota Corolla. Uh, I've been chasing this for a while. It's been for years, it's been getting a P0133 error code, which is an oxygen sensor error. Uh, but I recently got a P0171 error code, which is system 2 lean which led me to figure out that it is actually got a technical service bulletin, which is technical service bulletin EG045-07, which says the intake manifold gasket needs replacing. And uh, I'm going to show you the error codes and the technical service bulletin, and I'm going to try to fix this. Hopefully it will go away. So this is the technical service bulletin. It's the MIL on DTC. P0171, P030 something, and or P0133 engine running lean in sub-freezing ambient temperatures. And that's been the key for me, is this seems to only happen after an overnight soak. There seems to be a leak in the intake manifold gasket. And the uh, technical service bulletin number, hopefully it's in focus, EG045-07. And this actually is pretty nice in that it gives you a walk through the tools you'll need, and it's got diagrams in it, and Toyota's actually done a pretty nice job. So we're going to try to walk through and fix this problem. And to diagnose the codes, or to get the codes, I used a Bluetooth adapter on my car, and I used a torque app on my phone. And here you can see one where I'm getting a P0133, P0171 error codes. Uh, so that's what we're trying to clear. The first thing I do is take this cover off. It's a 10 millimeter wrench. There's a nut there, and another nut there, and there's two plastic clips in the back, but I've broken those off in previous repairs, so I'm not dealing with that. Okay, that plastic cover is off. I'm going to disconnect the air hose from the filter box into the intake manifold with a 10 millimeter wrench. There's an electrical connector on this mass flow sensor that I'm going to disconnect, push down this tab and pull it out. There's a blue solenoid purge valve this electrical connector. I'm going to push down and unplug that. So those two are out. Okay, there are two hoses I'm going to try to take off here for the solenoid purge. There's one under here and there's one over there. So I'm going to try to take those two off. They're part of the EVAP system. And i got to get them off. Okay, those two hoses are off of there. Let's see if we can get the, the air filter open. I want to open the air filter up. It's got two clips. There's one over here, one over here. They flip open and then you slide the filter box towards you and then pull it off. Okay, i got one more hose here on the filter box that I have to take off. It's down under here. And with those hoses disconnected, I've got that filter box out of there. The next thing I'm going to try to do is take out these two hoses. There's one there going into the throttle body and one going into the intake manifold. Hopefully those will come right off. Okay, I've got those two hoses out. Let's tuck those out of the way for a moment. So we're going to take the bolts off this intake manifold. Some bolts and some nuts. They're kind of tucked in a bunch of different places. Look on the right side here. On the right side we have one bolt there. And underneath this cable harness we have a, like, looks like a nut. And then another nut back by where this dipstick is. And then a fourth bolt. And I think there's one down low, but we'll see how it goes. I have a 12 millimeter socket wrench onto that right bolt. That's the 12 millimeter bolt that came out. The wrench is on the first nut. There's the nut that came out of there with a 12 millimeter wrench. There's the wrench on the next nut. That's the nut that came out of there. There's a wrench on the next bolt. There's the bolt that came out of there. Okay, looks like there's a bolt right there in the middle that I missed. That wrench is on the middle bolt. And that's the bolt that came out of there. Alright, there's one more bolt down low. I think it's the upper one on this bracket down here. I don't know if that kind of washes it out. Anyway, it's that bolt, I think. Let's see where that is. 
Okay, that wrench is down there on that bolt. We'll see if that's the right one. Okay, that's the bolt that came out of there. It's coloring's different and it's ever so slightly shorter, but it looks like the other one. So I think I'll try to get that back in the same location when I put it back together. A couple of clamps here that hold on this wiring harness. I flipped them up the other way. I don't think you have to remove them. I've just turned them around. Okay, well, I was trying to remove the intake manifold. This came off of here. It's a little hard to see because it's black, but this whole hose came off. Okay, there's more going on with this throttle body here. I think there's an electrical connector down there. And I think there's a couple of coolant hoses according to other videos I've seen. So i got to figure that out. Okay, so I think I got this connector loose. i pull this out. It goes into the throttle body. Looks like there's another connector here on the front of the throttle body. i got to get out. I had to squeeze down really hard on that connector there. It's a tab on that right side in order to get it to release and then I was able to get it out but that was a bit of a bear. That's what that connector looks like that goes into the throttle body. Honest with you, I don't know what it does. Alright, I'm going to see if I can take this over, other hose clamp off the intake hose from the air box. See if I can get that out of my way. I think I have a couple of coolant lines on the throttle body that need to come out. Okay, well that was a little embarrassing. That's a 10 millimeter wrench and I tried turning it clockwise. That's the wrong way. Counterclockwise loosens that. I get that hose off there, the big hose, and I'll see what else is going on. All right, so this is the throttle body and on the back side of it over there, there are two hoses that, as I understand it, run coolant to the throttle body. So let's see if I can pinch those off and remove them. I have this little style clamp here that I'm hoping to use to pinch off those lines so the coolant, not too much coolant comes out. Okay, so you can hardly see that clamp in there now, pinching down on that hose. So, it's that red thing. Okay, that was a mistake. I should have clamped both those hoses. I got the one hose off and it started pouring coolant out. Let me clamp both those hoses. Okay, I know that's a little difficult to see, but there's two hoses clamped off. Let's see if that stops the leak. Okay, that first hose is connected and no longer leaking. All right, I slid that hose clamp back. It was a bit of a bear. Had to get regular pliers rather than the channel locks to close the clamp, and or the hose clamp, and then I pried it back with a screwdriver. Okay, pried the other hose off with a screwdriver. Leaked a little bit of fluid, but not much, and it's out. Now let's see if we can remove the whole manifold. Okay, feels like I got one more hose tucked down in there. You can just kind of see it. See if I can get that off. I'm hoping it's a vacuum line, but it's a little hard to tell. Okay, that vacuum line is out. Looks like it's on a little plastic nipple. Okay, we got that. Intake manifold pulled out of there. Alright, I don't know what it's supposed to look like, but it's got a lot of liquid around that intake manifold. And that's the metal side into the head. A little bit of crap there and liquid. Clean that off. Okay, I used a little brake cleaner fluid and paper towels and I cleaned that off. And then I went and cleaned this off too. I just need to get it back together again. Okay, Toyota has changed their intake manifold gaskets from one part number to another. The old one's black, the new one's orange. I mistakenly got the black one, which you apparently can still buy on eBay. So I went out to Advanced Auto Parts and got this one instead, which is orange, which I'm hoping means it is a better quality silicone one than the black one that I could get at other places. So I'm going to try this one, but ideally you'd get the actual new Toyota part. And there's the intake manifold in position. Okay folks, this is not my favorite hose. This is on the back of the throttle body. I had a heck of a time getting that in there. I'm just going to zoom out and show you a little bit where it is. But it seems like you got to get that one on there before you put the manifold in because once the manifold's in, there's just no room. Hardly any room once it is on, but 
Anyway, there's that connection. Okay, I got those two coolant lines on there. Now I need to disconnect the hose clamps. Okay, those two clamps are out of there that was stopping the flow of the coolant, so that's all set. Okay, so I got the five fasteners at the top of the manifold on. That's two nuts and then three bolts. And then there's one down low here that has to go back in as well. And then on the throttle body, I've connected this hose back up. And on the throttle body, I need to plug this connector in here. Now it's a little bit shadowed, but hopefully you can see it. Right on the front there. Then on the back side of the throttle body, there's another connector. It goes in right there. Okay. And I put this hose back in for the air filter box. On the air filter box, I got this big hose up the top, and then there's a small vacuum line underneath there. I installed the air filter box and put these two clips back in. It's got to kind of tuck down under and back, and then this side goes down. Okay, there's a couple of hoses to hook up over here. This one came in from the side, that's pretty obvious. This one I had completely removed before. And I believe that one comes all the way over to that. And then underneath here, there's another one that goes into the side of the air filter. Hopefully that, hopefully I got that right. And there's two connectors here, uh, one for the mass flow sensor and the other for this purge valve. It's the bluish one. I have to hook those back up. Okay, I hook this line right back up. To the intake manifold. Okay, that cover's back on. Tighten these two nuts back into position, and now we'll see if it works. Well, it's up and running anyway. I'll take it out for a drive, see how it looks. I took a piece of the old and a piece of the new gasket and did a section of them. You can see here how flat one side of the old is. It's just really flattened out. The new one's got that nice profile. Uh, hopefully the new silicon gasket uh, maintains its shape better over time. Okay, I took the car out and I ran it for maybe 20-30 minutes, but it still didn't run the test for that O2 sensor. So I don't have the answer now about whether it really fixed the problem or not. Uh, I'll post the answer in the link uh, later to tell you whether it actually resolved the problem. I hope so. I had previously spent a bunch of money on replacing an oxygen sensor that didn't help at all. Uh, anyway, I hope this video was useful.